Hi, in this video I will explain the basic principles of bicycle brakes. I will try to make it be as a general video so that you can understand it and that way you will more easily learn and memorize things related to brakes when it comes to details and nuances and you will also be uh, you will more easily uh, see through marketing nonsense and when someone is trying to how do I say play you English is not my native but I will try to be uh, clear and to demonstrate and show everything this video will have a table of contents written in its description and if you're watching it on YouTube you will probably see it on timeline as well I will also put all the relevant links in the video's description so this first section will be called the introduction and I will now start by explaining the parts that uh, comp comp <laughs> comp that the braking system is made of <laughs> that's, that's what I want to say so we generally have some sort of controller it's usually a brake a lever or lever not sure how it's pronounced but here we have a brake lever and on this bicycle that I will now bring in we have a pedal this is a coaster brake bicycle so here we are controlling brakes by back pedaling and that engages the brake using the here this is used to keep it keep it locked and so this is our brake lever for the rear brake on this bicycle and the front brake is also a hand operated cantilever brake so we have the brake lever whichever way we use it then we have a way to link that lever its control to the brake in this case uh, that is done via a chain so when we back pedal we are using the the chain to turn this rear sprocket and engage the the brake on the other hand with these bicycles we have let's show it uh, let's show it here so we have brake housing and brake cable for the that's used to transfer the controls to the to the further down and then the next uh, logical element in the step is the brake calipers here we have rim brake calipers there are also disc brake calipers that look a bit differently but work with the using the the same principle and of course there are drum brakes like this one this one has the coaster brake which is effectively a drum brake now of course I do have articles explaining the design and the pros and cons of drum brakes and also of disc brakes I will link those articles in the video's description and I also have uh, an article explaining the next thing that I will be talking about that is mechanical advantage but first uh, okay let's let's talk about mechanical advantage mechanical advantage is basically a fancy name for a long <laughs> uh, pipe that you use as a lever as a pole so here this is very good for example if I want to tighten something very strongly in this vise I can use a lever and if I use a shorter lever I can put in a lot of effort in it a lot of strength and it will give me a very solid feed feedback very rigid even if my vise were flimsy because I'm using a short lever so that's deceitful a bit so to speak but if I make my lever be longer then I might if the vice is not rigid enough feel some flex but I will be exerting a lot of pressure or breaking it <laughs> when I when I do that so that is the same principle that we use on brakes for disc brakes the pads are moving for for a very small amount of space for the entire movement of the brake lever so that gives us a huge mechanical advantage on that end but the downside is that the brake disc is very small in diameter compared to the whole wheel of a rim brake where we have a 
a 622 millimeter big disc instead of 180 or, or smaller. So uh, for disc brakes it is crucial to have the pads be very near the braking area the brake disc in that case because we have a very small braking disc and we need a lot of mechanical advantage so that with our hand power we can exert enough pressure on it to effectively brake and to give us good enough braking. For in brakes that's not the case so we don't need that much mechanical advantage and so pads can be a bit further away from, from the rim. Now the catches, gotchas and caveats. On uh, road bicycle modern calipers they try to give a bit more mechanical advantage so that middle-aged people with weak hands can uh, feel like real sportsmen <laughs> and so while operating brakes from the from the hoods instead of from the drops where give you get a lot more leverage here it's it's weaker it's shorter lever and so in order to do that they had to move the pads a bit closer to the rim so that they move less for the entire movement of the of the lever and that gave a bit stronger better mechanical advantage but less clearance so in case of any imperfection those brakes will rub or block even the wheel if uh, spoke brakes are similar and they are centered with with adjusting bol bolts so they will not follow a line of a uh, untrue wheel unlike other systems where they can move sideways while reacting to any kind of untrueness in the rim, so more forgiving, with more clearance. And now uh, the mechanical advantage, as I explained using that lever, we will try to demonstrate it here with this brake, brakes or this brake. Here we have a lever that is for the front brake, and so when the pads reach the rim, this is how much the lever moves. This lever lets me adjust it to work with uh, road bicycle brakes or cantilever brakes that require less cable pull. So I can make this give me more mechanical advantage, but the problem and the limiting factor is how much travel I have because my hands are, or human hands are not super long, so this is limited distance. For children and uh, smaller hand people you even need to adjust this to stay closer all the time so that you can reach it with if you have shorter fingers so this is limited and you can reach only to the bars no further so if I try to increase mechanical advantage you will see how I will have to move lever a lot more see this is just just showing this section and now I will move this further in so that the pivot point that pulls the the cable is uh, closer to the pivot point of the of the brake and that will make it uh, pull less cable and so it will move a lot more to force the pads to reach the rim. Let me show it. Here we have this little part. Loosen it and... Okay, now it's... Now see how much this moves. See this amount of movement when I wanted to have the pads reach the see how much clearance is here and so I have now a lot of mechanical advantage but as soon as pads wear at least a little bit during a longer descent I risk having these reach the handlebars so not, not ideal so this will make it feel a bit more mushy not as firm but more mechanical advantage stronger braking for the same amount of force on the lever but with the uh, using a lot more travel so that's the problem so here I will re remove this put this back for V brakes okay now see how much travel there is see it's it's a lot less it's not noticeably less travel so uh, this leads us to the next uh, topic and that is rigidity Flexi flex is the nemesis of brake performance and so these levers are very rigid, very good and no longer made. So all the ones that you can get now for mechanical discs, even many for hydraulic discs are worse. Not, not much lighter but less stiff. For some reason this is lost art. Uh, I will list on my forum the exact models that, that were made for this. These are awesome. Keeping a stock of this. So, you have flex in the brake 
arm in the brake lever in terms that when you are exerting a lot of force here the whole arm will bend a bit closer to the handlebars and that flex that happens in this section so it all bends will not give you any more force on the brake on the brake caliper it will just be lost in that uh, flexing so that's that's a, a bad thing because this lets you move without affecting the cable tension so any flex because of the brake hoses or with hydraulic hoses is is lost you don't get it back as, as more braking braking force next the problem is the brake uh, housing for hydraulic brakes you can make the housing be uh, not expand when you put more hydraulic pressure so that's uh, relatively simple to make with the mechanical brakes it's not as easy there are some compression less or a lot less compressive housing for brakes but uh, it's uh, very complicated to install and uh, super expensive and exotic and uh, the flex in the cable is more or less minimal this is a bigger problem however on normally built frames like this one even for the rear brake there is a very sh short span of housing and then they have a housing stop and this is how the cable is spanned all the way to the re rear where we have just another short section this is very good because between these two points there is very little flex because this whole tube is super stiff for the amount of force that we exert when we are braking as opposed to brake housing so it's best to have housing stops and as little housing as possible and to have more free cable unfortunately modern trend with internal housing and everything often sh uh, does something like this bicycle so here for the rear brake we have all the way to the back housing and that gives me a lot more flex of the of the brake of the whole system and it's not ideal now further flexing we have at the calipers with these brakes that is minimal with rim brakes that is these are relatively with wheel brakes relatively long so some manufacturers don't make this stiff enough and also there is flex of the the fork when you are exert a lot of brake pressure here the counter is trying to spread this out and there are things that call brake boosters that are just like uh, another extra uh, metal rigid thing that you can uh, tighten here and center here to keep these from spreading so that any extra force is put into the rim brake, making brake pads push harder into the rim instead of trying to spread this so for the rear brake there are chain stays that are a lot more flexible a lot weaker but I have an article on braking on bicycles uh, the rear brake is unloaded when you start braking hard because you will even get sometimes uh, have propensity to even lift depending on the bicycle geometry but the rear wheel doesn't have much stopping power so having some flex here is not in practice relevant it won't make much of a difference for rim brakes we also have another thing where flex can happen and that is uh, the the pads themselves so here i hope we can see with camera let me take just a battery flashlight to show it better you can see that the pads are at an angle towards the rim so that the front part of the pad touches the rim first and then the rear part you can see here I will try to do that so I am pressing it and now the front part has touched the rim but the rear part is still not touching the rim still not pressed against it now I will further go moving more lever and now it's all pressed against the rim and so I can now move camera to show the lever to see how much uh, lever movement I lose so I will now move the lever just to have the front part touch the disc the wheel that is okay here it is and now further movement see until the rear part also 
touches it. So that's how much brake travel I am losing because my pads are not aligned all the way parallel to the rim but are aligned in a way that is popularly referred to as toe-in and some people believe that it makes brakes not squeal and work better and in the video that we will hopefully also record today I will explain why that is a myth and a nonsense even though it's propagated by many renowned sources that are otherwise good and uh, reliable so that's uh, uh, explaining why the earth is round after all <laughs> that's how it feels so for this video I think I've explained most uh, things that I uh, think are generally important for for brakes and I will put uh, links with articles that can explain things in more detail in the video's description so I'm watching uh, this is very very small area a cameraman will fall over the bicycle just a second to remove it so uh. So the, uh, this is the, the whole video for, for this general part and I have articles explaining many things in more details for those who are interested and uh, you, can, you can find more info and, and all the details and explanations. If you have any questions please use the bikegrounding.net forum. I will make a, a related video explaining the brake squeal elimination. That's something that I also want to, to explain and show and uh, that will also be linked uh, in the video description if I don't forget. For any questions or comments please use the bygremlin.net forum because YouTube is uh, useless when it comes to comments. I also have a video and article explaining why that is the YouTube being useless about comments and so uh, lots of info for those who want to, to learn and I hope I've explained this uh, and demonstrated it clearly enough so that you can really understand the, the basics instead of just uh, memorizing it and uh, repeating like uh, parrots because that's uh, in that case difficult to remember and difficult to understand when there is some slight variance and you will be more susceptible to any kind of marketing nonsense like snake oil salesman bicycle industry likes to do marketing instead of engineering a lot I have a ranting video about that as well so a lot of material over the past decade just from the top of my head where I've covered different things and this is for this hope it's not too long thank you very much for watching if you wish to support my work you can do so via uh, one-time payments uh, buy me a coffee or patreon donations uh, patreon.com slash buy gremlin so that's appreciated and it helps uh, hopefully I'll save up for an action camera by the end of the year <laughs> Fingers crossed. Cheers. Stay cool.